You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the, <clears throat> the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboy. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and that's why we call it season five and all those videos from 2020 they're all loaded on my youtube channel my handle on youtube is right on the screen it's temi ageda which is right on the screen i will encourage you to visit my channel not only to view the old open heavens videos which are a, you know a great study guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i'm certain that that will bless you and very 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 important while you're on my youtube channel don't forget to subscribe like comment and share and the lord bless you as you do now pastor debo led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria in west africa and that will give you a few scriptures from the bible and a memory verse and that helps you to understand the body of the text praise the lord so let's go straight into the daily devotional today is sunday july the 7th sunday july the 7th and you know um this is the middle of the year one week already gone the bible says that god will we, uh, revive us, that he will revive us in the midst of the year he will revive his works in the midst of the year so this is god is going to revive us again so and that's why i was saying previously in previous videos that we need to revisit our goals for 2024 you know and um you know just look through them and um receive that extra uh, that new anointing to begin to 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 start and follow those goals up in Jesus' name, praise God. And I know we are in church, and this is the best place to. This is not the season or the time to miss church. We need God more than ever. We need His presence. His presence is our therapy, you know. Um, and the Bible says we go from strength to strength as we appear before God in Zion. We need His His Spirit. We need we need the presence of God. In His presence is fullness of joy, and at His right hand there are pleasures evermore. There's healing in the presence of God. There's deliverance upon Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance and holiness and the house of Jacob. We shall possess our possession. Amen. So you need God's presence. No matter what, don't let anything stop you from appearing before God in Zion on Sunday because there's a work that God wants to do in our lives. Praise God. So today's daily devotional, the title of today's Open Heavens is God's Refining Fire. Refiners, fire, fire, Holy Ghost, fire. Praise God. We need it so much. We need his fire so much. John the Baptist said that when he's come, he will baptize us. That's talking about Jesus Christ. He will baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. He's the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. And he said that fire burns him. He will burn up every shaft with unquenchable fire. He will burn the sickness, the hatred, the jealousy, the envy, the witchcraft, everything. He will burn it up with unquenchable fire. Amen. He will thoroughly purge his flow. In the book of Malachi, these are some of the scriptures that came to me as I was reading this. It talks about God, that um, he's, he's refiner's fire, he's like refiner's fire and like the fuller's soap. And that he will purge the sons of Levi that they may offer unto God an offering in righteousness. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God's refining fire, although that is coming from a different angle now. Praise God. Now, our scriptural reading is taken from the book of Job, chapter 23, verses 6 to 12. Holy Ghost fire. Hallelujah. Mm. Job, chapter 23, verses 6 to 12. Job, chapter 23, verses 6 to 12. Now, I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And there's a reason why, because the King James can be a bit complicated, but I need to be able to explain properly. And I know that said we should start from verse 6, but really for us to get an understanding, I'm going to start from verse 1, and I'm going to read as quickly as possible. So Job chapter 23 from verse 1, Job answered and said, even today my complaint is bitter. My hand is listless because of my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come to his seat. I will present my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I will know the words which he would answer me. 
and understand what he will say to me. Now, we're going into verse 6. We're reading from verse 6 to 12. Would he contend with me in his great power? No, for he will take note of me. There the upright could reason with him, and I will be delivered forever from my judge. Look, I go forward, but he's not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he walks on the left hand, I cannot behold him. And when he turns to the right hand, I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot has held fast to his steps. I have kept his way and not turned aside. I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. May the Holy Spirit bless the reading of his word. So Job, hmm. so Job um, was going through some afflictions. He was going through some afflictions permitted by God. And he thought that it was God who was afflicting him, but it was not God. You know, he opened the door. The Bible says that if you break an head, the serpent will bite. He said that the very thing he feared came upon him. So it was his fear that gave Satan leeway into his house. Because God had made an edge around Job and around all he had on every side. God had blessed the work of his hands and caused his substance to increase in the land. So how did Satan get in? Because Job, because of fear. Fear is one of the devil's worst enemy. Anyway, so Job did not understand, did not know anything about the enemy. He did not know that what was happening to him was as a result of Satan. Satan's attack. Satan attacked him. Praise God. And um, he, he being an upright man, you know, um, he said in days to come, my righteousness, um, I think David has said that in the days to come, my righteousness will stand for me. So he believed that God was the one that was afflicting him. And so he began to go through these trials. And he, you know, he was saying that, you know, when he started with God, that God, he will, he will tell God his own side of the story. And he was, he began, he began to say something here that is so interesting. He said, I go forward, he's not there. So that is talking about refiner's fire. It's talking about how Christians go through trials and exams. I call it the examination. And you understand why. Say, so I go forward, but he's not there. So you can go through some trials that is as if God is not there. He said, backward, but I cannot perceive him. You're looking for God in this situation. Where is God when all these things were happening? He, when he walks on my left, I cannot behold him. When he turns to the right, I cannot see him. Hmm. But he knows the way that I take. And who is he talking? When, when, I, when he said that, but he knows the way that I take. You know, El Roy means the God who sees me. So he's saying that God knows the way that he takes. God, God knows our El Roy. He knows he's seeing us. So when you're going to try us, especially when it seems like God is not there, don't be deceived. God is very much there. Our El Roy is there. He's there. He knows the way that we take. He said, um, and when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Praise the Lord. So sometimes God can test. You know, so our Elroy, so, and, and somebody said this, that um, during the examination, the examiner is always very quiet. The other examiner, the invigilator is always quiet. So when you're going through exams of life, the examiner is quiet. That doesn't mean he's not seeing you. Elroy has his eyes on us. Praise God. So God is there. So thank him because he will never leave us or forsake us. He will be the fourth man in the fire. Praise God. God's refining fire. He's always there. He never takes his eyes off us, not for one minute. And that is, you must know that, that God will never leave or forsake us. He swore in Hebrews 13 that I will not, I will not in any way leave you or forsake you or relax my hold on you assuredly not. So God is with us, even in the fire. So the memory verse is taken from 1 Peter 1, 7, that the trial of your faith being more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it, it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory and the appearing of Jesus Christ. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ. And the scripture that is coming to my heart is that if God does not chastise you, then you're a bastard. Then you're not one of his. 
Okay, so chastisement. God chastises his own. God God will chastise his own. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a father ch can chastise his children. And God will only chastise us because we are his children. Amen. Kings usually get the best of everything that he says. Our God is the king of kings. And he wants everyone who surrenders to him to be the best. To achieve this, God passes them through a refining process to make them the best they can ever be. Just like a goldsmith puts gold through fire for it to come out purer, God will take you through a refining fire for you to come out purer and better. And are you willing to go through the refining fire of God? In John 15, okay, praise God. So God, God tests. God tests. When he, has, when he has tried me, I shall comfort as gold is what Job was saying. You know, so God can test. There are different kinds of tests, too. They're the ones that God is testing you. He's taking you through trials. You know, God took, took them through the longer way that he may know what is in their heart. And, you know, and the, but there are tests that you yourself cause as a result of your disobedience or as a result of foolishness. Those ones happen. But when I began to look through the word, there were so many people, one of them being our Lord Jesus Christ. He went through a serious exam. But at the end, he came forth as gold. You know, he went through the worst test. And you see, God did not talk throughout that time. In fact, at a point, Jesus Christ said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. But God was with him. You know, God was, God was with him. God did not leave him or did not forsake him. It was only once that God turned his eyes away from Jesus Christ. But he never left his son. God is always there. Always there. You know, so um, Jesus Christ went through that test. Joseph went through that test. Amen. And he came out when God had finished with him. All his foolishness was left behind. He had grown up. He did not faint in the day of adversity. You know, Naomi went through a rough time, but God rewarded her at the end. Hannah went through a very, very rough season of refining, but she came out and brought forth one of the greatest prophets in the history of Israel. And Jonah and Job. Praise God. So, you know, when God is God is going to use you, he's going to have to remove some things that should not be in you. And then that's why you go to trials and or what we call a wilderness experience. And you determine whether your wilderness experience is 40 days or 40 years. If you continue to be disobedient, your wilderness, experience, your time of going through the fire will be extended. OK, so you need to learn your lessons and learn obedience during God's refining times and also be very careful what you say and that he says are you willing to go through the refining fire of god in john 15 2 he said every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he projects it that it may bring forth more fruit if you want to be a branch that is connected to the vine and bear fruits for god you must be ready to go through a pruning process it will be tough but it will make you more fruitful okay so you go through a, a pruning process and you see sometimes when we look at what we have been through the, the trials the struggles you turn around and say thank you god because i went through that because if not for what i went through i won't be the man or the woman i am today amen so i mean it, it's 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 god because he loves us that's why he chastises us that he says he according to the jesus christ said he projected that he may bring forth more fruit and the pruning process can be very painful okay can be very very painful but it's necessary so that new roots can come up amen so that the what god has planted the bible says that um he hid treasures inside the earthen vessel so that those treasures can be made manifest amen in the pruning process god will take away things that are competing with him from your heart he may ask you to stop wearing jewelry not necessarily because it's a sin to wear them, but because there may be a distraction to your fruitfulness. He may allow persecution to arise against you so that you will draw closer to him. As you draw closer to him, you become more like him and become more fruitful. He might hold some things back from you while, for a while to test your faith so that you can become perfect, one thing, wanting nothing. That's in James 1, 2 to 4. And the Bible says we should count it all joy when we go through trials, knowing that the testing of our faith is going to produce patience. And very important, we must allow patience to have its complete work so that we can be complete and entire, wanting nothing. Okay? So that, that pruning, you, you have to, you find out that when you're going through a rough time, you are praying more, 
you are fasting more, you are studying the word of God more, you're going to church. Now, when you go to church, you are going with, um, your eyes are focused on God because now you know that you, the only person that can build you out of this trouble is God. You know, so that's when God begins to take all the idols out of your life, all the things in which you trusted. It's like when the ego, hmm? when um, in the early, when the, the babies, the eaglets are born, the mother will go and feed them, bring food for them. And then when it is time for them to, you know, begin to grow up, you know, she begins to train them. And that training process is not fun. She will just take the nest and begin to shake it and begin to shake it. And, you know, she will come at a certain time and turn the net, you know, because she, she builds her nest on very high mountain, very high, high mountain. She will just turn the nest upside down and the babies are just falling and falling because they have to learn how to fly. And that's what God does to us. Sometimes the time has come for you to, you have outgrown this level and you need to move to the next level, you know. And somebody says new levels, new devils. It's not, not, not very true new levels new angels are also assigned to you to counter those new devils praise god amen so god allows us you know sometimes you can put yourself into trouble you know and you go through a rough time as a result of that but sometimes the trials could be as a result of god training you that's why you do so much you do all you can do and and it looks like there's no change until you relax and let go and let god so that he can do the work that he wants to do. You must allow God to finish his work. You must be obedient while you're going through through um, those rough times. Be very obedient. Otherwise, your, your time in the wilderness will be extended. It can become 40 years. You know, and don't faint in the day of adversity. If you faint in the day of adversity, it means that your strength is small. And you repeat the class. So at the end of the refining process, you become so valuable that people will run over each other to favor you. Just like everyone wants gold in its purest form. You become a spectacle to your generation. As everyone wants the best of fruits, you will have people from all over the world coming to glean from the great value that you possess. Those who successfully go through the pruning process of God become superstars in their generation because they carry great value that the whole world wants to glean from they are problem solvers and people see them they are problem solvers and people see them as blessings money is never the their problem because their value attracts more attracts money from all over all around the world they don't beg for doors to be open to them their names open doors are you ready to be refined by god in other words when you go when joseph went through um those years he spent I think about 13 years in jail, you know, just going through Potiphar. When, <laughs> by the time he knew, the Bible says until the day he remained in captivity, until the time his word came, you know, he knew that this was it. And when he, they said Pharaoh was calling him, he went and quickly shaved. He knew his time had come. He knew he had, he, it was time for him to enter into his promised land he was now more mature there was no longer a daddy's baby because he had gone through the he had he had he was now he had now come forth as gold you know and he went and he became prime minister so that's what that that is saying now you see when you go through the the pruning process when you let god refine you and let him do his work in you you know don't rebel against his work in you <laughs> don't you can't rebel against god you 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 you'll be wasting your time and that's why when you go through a wilderness experience, you can do so many, many things, do many, many, many things, and it's not working. It's not working. So let God have his way. Let go and let God. So that after everything, you comfort as gold. You know, when Hannah, when Naomi came back from, after losing her, her husband and her two children, you know, and she came back and they said, ah, is this not Naomi? And God is so good. So we are going through that rough time. There's fire on the mountain, but you're looking, people cannot see the smoke on you. Do you get, you may be going through a rough time, but in the eyes of people, you look very okay. You know, you look very, very okay. You know, so no, she, they were calling her uh, Naomi. She said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. She said she went out full and came back empty. But what did God do for her? God gave her a son who became the great, 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 great grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ. And after Job, um, you know, after God restored him, what happened? God restored his children, restored his family, restored his riches and his wealth. Amen. And Hannah, 
after all enduring abuse at the hands of Penina, Pen, Penina, what happened? God gave her a son. God gave her a son who was one of the greatest prophets in Israel. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, he, 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 he even went into hell for our sake. The Bible says that he that ascended, first of fall descended into the lower parts. He went to hell, through hell, during his, his process. But he came out, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jonah, after being disobedient, don't be disobedient. Don't be disobedient. Otherwise, it will prolong your wilderness experience. The prayer point here is, Father, please refine me and make me the purest and best version of myself that I can ever be in Jesus' name. Amen. Let God have his way. Count it all joy as you go through those trials, knowing that the testing of your faith is to produce patience and let patience have its complete work so that you can be complete and entire, wanting nothing. Amen. Praise God. Even David went through his own time. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Because the Bible says in everything we should give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. We thank you for where you started from with us, how far you brought us and where you are taking us to. Father, Lord, we ask for our Elroy, we ask for grace to go through our refining process with courage in, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, almighty God, because you restore all the years that the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm have eaten in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and when we have been tried, we shall come forth as gold that you will use for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I ask for grace for people who are going through a rough time. Almighty God, I pray, Almighty God, that you help them to stand perfect and complete in all the will of God in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because your eyes are on us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. Probably more I would have loved to say. But thank you for taking time to listen. And I know it definitely will bless you. And while you're on my YouTube channel, this is very, very important. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And have a beautiful Sunday service. And thank you so much, pastors, for sharing this in your church. God bless you, sir and ma. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on my channel again. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a beautiful service. My name again is Sister Tayo. And God bless you today. Have a beautiful service.